St. Louis Blues Hockey is brought to you by Bush Beer. Head for the mountains of Bush. By Southwest Airlines, providing frequent flights and low unrestricted fares to many exciting destinations. By your Midwest GMC truck dealers, Delman, Bomberito, and Brooklyn GMC. By your local McDonald's restaurants. We're your favorites for food, folks, and fun. By Shop and Save. The more you shop, the more you save. By Allstate, for home, auto, life, and business, you're in good hands with Allstate. By Taco Bell, where else can you get so much great food for just 59 cents? Run for the border. By AutoZone, the best part in auto parts. And by Discover Card, it pays to discover the card that pays you back. It's the opening game of a three-game road trip in Western Canada. The Red Hot Blues take on a very tough foe, the defending Stanley Cup champion Edmonton Oilers here at the Northlands Coliseum. Hi, everybody, and welcome to Canada. I'm Ken Wilson along with John Kelly. We mentioned it. It's the first of three in a row on the road for the Blues. They come in red hot. They have won seven of their last eight. In fact, they have already beaten the Oilers twice this season, including the victory here, but that was back early in the year, John, and uh, in all honesty, the Oilers are a much better team now than they were before Christmas. Well, they are. They played pretty well. They played last night, as a matter of fact, and beat Pittsburgh 7-5 to five in a wild game. There were 94 shots on goal total, and I don't think the Blues want to get into that kind of freewheeling game tonight. As a matter of fact, the Blues, who haven't played since Saturday, came to Edmonton a day early. They arrived here Sunday, so it gave the players a, a day to get acclimated to Edmonton and a day, a day to get over that long uh, flight here. I got a lot of lines for that get acclimated to Edmonton, but it is nice. They're settled in. Uh, they had the opportunity to see the Oilers last night, and they're ready to go to open this trip. And the Blues have a chance tonight to move into first place in the Norris Division. Well, they're only a point behind the Blackhawks. The Hawks don't play until Thursday at home against Quebec. So with a win tonight, the Blues can take sole possession of first place. And they are red hot. They've won seven of eight. Meanwhile, the Hawks are slumping a bit. Boy, the Hawks are struggling. Mike Keenan's team has lost four of its last five. As far as the defending Stanley Cup champions are concerned, right now they're playing as well as any team in the NHL. But, John, they're still in third place in the Smythe division. That's because earlier in the year they lost nine in a row and got off to a horrendous 2-11-2 start. And Coach John Muckler said that losing makes you humble. And there certainly is humility, humility rather, even with a Stanley Cup team. And the Oilers are defending Stanley Cup champions. But since then, they played very well. And you have to consider them another favorite to win a Stanley Cup again. They're six and eight years. And they have some very good players. Last year's MVP, Mark Messier, and also Peter Klima. Well, Messier has been certainly the number one center since the departure of Wayne Gretzky. Without him, the Oilers are not the same team. And Peter Glima, the ex-Detroit Red Wing, 11 goals in his last seven games. And he was flying last night. And he certainly is the number one man the Blues have to watch tonight. It's going to be interesting to see if the Blues, a defensive-oriented team, can slow down this quick-skating, sometimes high-scoring Edmonton Oiler club. We're on the road in Edmonton. It's the St. Louis Blues and the defending Stanley Cup champion, Edmonton Oilers, coming right up. This is St. Louis Blues Hockey. And Shane Heyer as the officials convene at center ice. In that tonight for the Blues is red hot Vince Riendo. He has won six in a row. His record in his last nine games, seven wins, a loss, and a tie. Riendo lifetime against Edmonton, 2-1-1. With a 3.29 average. At the other end, Pokey Reddick, only his second start this year. He spent most of the year in Cape Breton of the American League, where he had a 10 and 10 record and a 4.02 average. So we're set to go here. It's the Blues and Oilers, the start of a three-game road trip. And to tell you about the first period, here's Ken Wilson. Thank you very much, John Kelly. It'll be Adam Oates facing off against Mark Messier, who wins the faceoff, and at the defense, Steve Smith with it. And the Oilers with a puck. A Buka boom pass is broken up, but Smith recovers and comes to center ice. Now to Messier. Into the blue zone. Back for the puck as Messier is poke checked as Stevens. Rink wide pass too far for Brindamore. The puck slides the length of the ice. Buka boom back to touch it and does. 
And it is an icing call against the Blues, who started out with Stevens and Brown on defense in front of Riendo. And right away, Brian Sutter sends out Rich Sutter as the forward line of Oates, Hull, and Brindamore to start the game. And Sutter will replace Hull for the moment. Not dressed tonight for Brian Sutter's Blues. Paul McLean back in St. Louis, St. Louis with a rib injury. Also out, Gino Cavallini, Ron Wilson, and Mario Merwas scratch. Rick Mahar is back in the lineup after missing a few games with a foot injury. Not dressed tonight for the Oilers. Craig Simpson, Martin Jelena, and Jeff Smith. Also, Bill Ranford, their number one goalie, scratched because of a back injury. Oates wins the draw on his own end. Captain Scott Stevens having trouble in the corner with Messier. Messier trying to move in front. Finally checked, reaches for the puck again, and Brindamore beats him to it. Ahead to Oates at the red line. He'll wrist it in off the end boards, and Redding knocks the puck away into the corner as Brindamore is taken down. Messier starts out of his own end for Edmonton. Ahead to Glenn Anderson. Anderson on the right wing into the blue zone, forced away from the puck by Stevens. A pass behind the blues net, intercepted, and Oates an outlet pass to Sutter. Two on two with Brindamore, and the puck gets away from Sutter. Now loose at center ice, taken by the Oilers, Anderson. In over the line, Anderson into the corner to Messier. He centers, Muni up from the point, can't get a shot, plays the puck to Buchberger in the corner. Now to Anderson in front, and Buchberger is spun around, and the Blues start out. The end of a shift for Brindamore. He'll just flip the puck in, and both teams are changing players. Charlie Huddy back behind his own net for Edmonton, now in front of his goal. Sends the puck up the middle. A nice pass taken by the veteran Ken Lindsman. Over the line to Tegan and trying to move, and he does a shot. And it goes off Riendo and off the glass to Dave Lowry. Lowry to center ice is checked by Klima. He gives the puck to Paul Cavallini, who shoots it in. Then he's taken down. Paul after it, beaten to it by Muni. Then Bassett intercepts and is unable to center. And the Oilers, Klima, their red-hot goal scorer, in his own zone, a cross-ring pass to Huddy. I had to take it onside, and a shot right on, and Riendo the save. Tikkanen can be explosive. Lowe keeps the puck in at the point. Over to Joseph, and his shot is deflected wide. And the Blues getting hemmed in a bit in their own zone, and they play it around the boards to Lowry. In the middle of Bassin, and he just tips the puck to center ice, and Kevin Lowe shoots it in for Edmonton. Two minutes, 15 seconds gone. First period, no score. Both teams completing a player change. Lowe takes over at center ice for Edmonton to Klima. He loses the puck. Courtnall breaks in with Hall. Two on one in front of Hall. He shoots. He scores! Fred Hall on a two on one set up by Jeff Courtnall. And the Blues take the lead one to nothing here at 228 in the first period. Number 59 for Brett Hall. And a great play by Courtney. He stole the puck at center. It was a two-on-one. Low was back, and he was turning every which way. And the pass came across the hull, and he puts it in top corner. Reddick did not have a chance, as Courtney made a great pass, and Hall scores number 59, and the Blues lead 1-0. Bogey Reddick in his second game, beaten early. He gave up five just six days ago at Hartford in a 5-1 loss. Blue shoot the puck the length of the ice right on goal. Reddick the save. Buka boom behind his net for Edmonton. Graves skates through, takes the puck. Up to Anatoly Semenov. Back at center ice to Graves. He's too well covered. And Courtnall with a puck again at center ice. A pass ahead too far for Tuttle. Here are the Oilers. Semenov rink wide to Lamb. He's stood up by Sneps. And Courtnall skates back for the puck in his own end. Plays it to the near wing to Tuttle. He'll flip the puck into the Oilers zone. Bukaboom back for it. Plays it to Steve Smith. He'll stick handle away from one Blues player, then hand it to Darren Kimball. Kimball over the line to Ronnie. Ronnie cuts to the slot, shoots, and it deflects over the Edmonton goal. Then Jeff Bukaboom in the corner. Plays it to Smith behind the Edmonton net. He sends it to the corner. The Blues doing some good forechecking. And now Steve Smith gets the puck. Blues lead it one to nothing. Up to Semenov. He wears number 19 for the Oilers. He stick handles into the St. Louis zone and dumps the puck behind the net. Edmonton is changing. Paul Cavallini starts out to the blue line. His pass knocked away. Then he leaves the puck at center ice, and here's Craig McTavish with it. He'll play it back to Muni. Muni at the center circle for Edmonton. Flips the puck high into the blue zone. It comes down in the corner. Paul Cavallini plays it up to Momesso. Now to Ronnie, who breaks out with Kimball. They crisscross at center ice. 
Ronning into the Edmonton end. Ronning to the boards. Plays the puck around the end boards behind the Edmonton net into the near corner. And here's McTavish. He'll give it to Huddy. Hemmed in a bit. Now behind the net. And it's played out on the right wing. Now to center ice to McTavish. The Oilers on the attack. And McTavish shoots the puck in. It's left by Riendo for Stevens. Out to Hall who has scored a goal. Now to Ronning at center ice. He's well covered by Dave Brown. Then Brown and Stevens after the puck. And it's shot in by the Oilers. McTavish gets it. He's alone. His teammates are changing. McTavish just pokes the puck ahead and it ends up behind the Blues net. Played there by Jeff Brown. Rink wide to Stevens. Ahead at center ice to Oates. Oates into the Edmonton end. He's checked by Chris Joseph. And the puck behind the net for Kevin Lowe. He loses it. And then Tikkanen back to intercept. Essa Tikkanen, a long pass at center ice. Too far for Messier. The puck the length of the ice. Back to touch at Stevens. And it is an icing call against the Oilers. The Blues lead it on a Brett Hall goal. This is St. Louis Blues hockey. Hey, I can't see. She's buying a lot. She likes all of us. It's our everyday low prices. You're getting crowded. That's because she got it all with values like these. Ultra Cheer Laundry Detergent, only $2.27. Campbell's Microwave Soups, only 85 cents. Banquet Supreme Microwave Pot Pies, just 67 cents. And all our farm fresh produce comes with a double your money back guarantee. The more you shop, the more you save. Blues lead 1 0 on Hull's 59th from Courtnell at 228. And Hull and Courtnell continue their hot play. 13 goals in his last eight games for Brett Hull. And Jeff Courtnell in a bit of a roll himself. He now has 11 points in his last nine games. From the faceoff in the Edmonton end, Anderson to center ice and a long shot, gloved by Riendo. He leaves the puck for Featherstone into the corner to Sneps. Oates is at center ice with Brindamore and Hull. Here's a pass for Oates taken away. Bukaboom plays it to the right side. Messier into the corner. Written out by Sneps. And a battle for the puck. Oates gets it to Brindamore. Nice play and a give and go back to Adam Oates. To the red line. Oates into the Edmonton end. Hall goes to the net. Tekanen is all over him. The puck is loose in the corner. Brindamore. Bukaboom takes him to the boards. Then Oates after the puck. A penalty coming up. Smith and Oates are there also. Oates centers. Back to the blue line. It comes to Sneps. He'll take a shot. Reddick the save. Puck in the corner, delayed penalty coming up against Edmonton. And as Steve Smith touches the puck, the penalty will be called against the Oilers with 14.02 to go here in the first period. The Blues lead it on Brett Hull's first period goal. This is St. Louis Blues hockey. I wish Mom could be here. You know how tough it would be on her. It's a bus. Maybe I shouldn't go. You know, it's something we've always dreamed of. It's just that it's so far away. It's a good college. <laughs> you do fine. Yeah, Don't well, forget to write. <laughs> Once a week to your mother. Hi. If you need any money, just let me know. That's a Tekanen, who is the Oilers' leading goal scorer, is also their best defensive forward. And his job tonight is to shadow Brett Hull. He did too good a job there. He followed Hull all the way down the ice and picked up an interference penalty at 5.58. Blues with a man advantage. The Oilers get the puck in their own end and shoot at the length of the ice. The Blues successful about 20% of the time with a man advantage. Their power play is rated 11th in the league. Edmonton, 13th in the league, killing penalties, and they're successful at that about 80% of the time. And they stop the Blues at the Oiler line and shoot the puck down the ice again. Low and Muni on defense. Lamb up front with McTavish, who has five shorthanded goals, killing the penalty. To center ice, Jeff Brown. He drives the puck in. Played along the boards by Ronnie. He sends it behind the net now into the near corner. Brindamore taken down. Hull runs into the pile. McTavish can't get the puck out. Oates keeps it in. Now to Ronnie. Top of the circle. Straight away to Oates. Over to the left side to Jeff Brown. Brown back to Oates. He's got Ronnie along the near right boards. Ronnie takes the pass. Hull's in the slot. Ronnie a shot, and that's deflected just wide. A minute to go in the Blues power play. They already lead it one to nothing. Brindamore in front to Hull. Hull a shot tipped wide by Reddick. It's center to Hull. One backhand shot doesn't get through. Now another shot doesn't get through. And in the crease, Reddick finally smothers the puck. Well, John, you would have thought somebody might have knocked Brett Hull down. 
If that puck had ever sat down for him, he would have had a great opportunity. Well, you're right. They left Brett Hall wide open in the slot, and you don't do that, not when you have a 59-goal scorer there, including 21 power play goals. Hall had two cracks at it, and then the Oilers nearly put the puck in their own net as Reddick was down, and the defenseman back there shoveled the puck back to Reddick, and he had to be alert to cover up. By the way, Grant Fuhr, the Oilers' other goalie who was suspended because of drug abuse for the entire year. His suspension was commuted to 60 games, and he's playing tonight in the American League, his first game back, and he should be back in Edmonton in a week. He is scheduled to play, says John Muckler, next Monday night in New Jersey. From the faceoff, Courtnell tries to move in front. He's checked by Smith. Now the puck loose in the court corner. Courtnell gets it to Brown at the right point. The Blues with 30 seconds left in the power play to Courtnell. Out to the point to Stevens, to Tuttle, back to Stevens. Shot right on, it's knocked down in front and loose. And it's played by Semenov. Ahead to Messier. The Oilers are shorthanded. Messier with Semenov going over the line ahead of him. Hands the puck to Oates, he moves in, shoots. Oh, and Redick out to make the save on Oates. Now eight seconds to go in the penalty. In front, Stevens on a great chance and he shoots wide. As the Oilers get very careless, and then Messier shoots the puck the length of the ice. Deacon and back on. The Oilers survive the Blues' power play. Here come the Blues again. Oates on the left wing into the corner. Centers for Tuttle. And the puck is out of his reach as Murphy was in his way. Deacon and starts out. His pass to Charlie Huddy. Huddy over the line to Ken Lindsman. He'll leave it. Then Cortnall a good check covering Murphy. But there'll be a penalty call, and it'll be for holding. Too good a check by Jeff Cortnall. He'll be waved off for two minutes. This is St. Louis Blues Hockey. Up here, the days run long. Sometimes the job is all uphill. But you keep on going. And once you've made it all the way to the top, the mountains will take your breath away. And remind you, there's no place you'd rather be than right here, right now. Jeff Cortnell in the box, holding the call at 8.20. The Blues lead 1-0. Oilers in the power play for the first time on the year. They are 12th overall, 19.7%. The Blues penalty killing, 6th best in the league at 82.4%. As Cortnell held up the Oilers player coming back in the zone. And now a face-off just inside the blue zone. Blues have the lead on Hull's 59th goal. He has 59 goals in 55 games. And the Blues, from the draw, shoot the puck the length of the ice. Bassett is up front, along with Lowry. Sneps and Paul Cavallini killing the penalty. Now less than 11 and a half minutes to go in the opening period. The Blues with that 1-0 lead. Deacon and through center ice to Messier. In over the line. Now to Klima in the corner. He battles with Paul Cavallini, who takes the puck away and shoots at the length of the ice right on goal. Smith, Tikkanen, Messier, Anderson, and Klima on this Oiler power play. Glenn Anderson out on the right wing to Messier. His initial pass blocked. Now to Anderson in the slot. Anderson, a shot and a pad save by Riendo. Mark Messier in the corner. Messier plays the puck to Steve Smith at the left point. His screenshot goes wide. Here's Tikkanen at the right point. Off the far boards, playing it to Klima. He has the 11 goals in the last seven games. He's poke checked by Sneps. Lowry gets the puck and finds an opening to relieve the pressure. And both teams here looking to change players. Messier carries in over the line, flips the puck to the middle, and Rich Sutter intercepts, breaks to center ice. Sutter pulls up, trying to kill time, sends the puck back to Scott Stevens. And he'll shoot it well into the Edmonton zone. 40 seconds to go on the court and all penalty. The Oilers on their first power play. The Blues 0 for 1 with a man advantage. Steve Smith lugs it into the St. Louis end. Comes to the corner, plays it around the boards to the far side. Teakin in at the point. Has to leave it for Anderson, or rather Murphy. Then the Blues intercept. Can't get the puck out. Here's Steve Smith behind the back to Murphy. He shoots. Hits the side of the net. Lindsman centers. And Brown intercepts. Can't clear. Smith at the left point. Across the rink to Teakin it. In the slot to Lindsman, and he shoots the puck in front, and it's cleared away by the Blues. Stevens trying to clear the zone in camp. Cortnall about ready to come back on. And the pass intercepted by Stevens, cleared to center ice. Cortnall returns to the ice. Sutter steals the puck, gets it ahead to Cortnall, but he can't control. 
Seminoff for Edmonton. A right wing pass to the former Red Wing, Joe Murphy. Murphy in over the line with Seminoff. Drops the puck for the Soviet player. He goes behind the net. Centers for Murphy, but Courtnall back to intercept. There's 9.20 to go in the first period. The Blues are up one to nothing. At center ice, Oates. A pass to Courtnall over the line. He's run into by Muni. Deacon in back behind his own net to take the puck. Loses it to Oates, then slaps it away to Charlie Huddy. Huddy's pass goes through the skates of Glenn Anderson. And Featherstone back for the puck and pulls up with it behind his own net. The Blues complete a line change. A pass too far on the left wing for Oates. And the puck at center ice, controlled by Mark Messier. one nothing. Blues lead it. Messier around Oates. Messier over the line. Shoots the puck into the corner. Caroms around the boards to the far side. And he keeps it in. And then Harold Sneps takes over. His pass at center ice out of the reach of Oates. The puck the length of the ice. Reddick doesn't play it. Finally, the Oilers touch it. A very dangerous play by Reddick. And it's icing against the Blues, who have the game's only goal. This is St. Louis Blues Hockey. I check for a living. And I've been checking out the deals at your Midwest GMC dealers. These jimmies are the ultimate in 4x4 value, with a fuel saver, fuel injected engine, rear anti lock brakes, and a standard 4.3 liter V6 power. The jimmies are in a class by themselves. They've got hundreds of two and four door models to choose from. Your Midwest GMC dealers, another reason why GMC jimmies are number one. Check them out. Only at Bellman GMC in North County, Bomberito GMC in Ellisville, and Brockland GMC in Fairmont City, Illinois. Brett Hall has scored his 59th of the year from Courtnell at 228. Hall has now scored a goal in eight consecutive games. That ties a Blues Club record. Wayne Babbage scored a goal in eight straight games back in 80-81. But you have to put an asterisk beside this record, Ken, because Brett missed two games. So he technically, according to NHL rules, did not score a goal in eight straight. But he did score a goal in his own eight consecutive games. I have to give it a little Roger Maris treatment. Here's a loose puck in the blue zone, and the Oilers can't control. Lomeso a pass to Kimball. Kimball to the Edmonton line. Moving in on the right side into the corner. Centers off the goalie's stick. Loose puck in front. Momesso can't get a shot from his knees. And the Oilers take over deep in their own end. McTavish skates behind the net. Picks up the puck. Comes up the near boards to his own line. He's poke check. Now the veteran Kevin Lowe in his 11th season. Plays the puck rink wide too far for Brown. And young Chris Joseph takes over and shoots it in. Quickly in for it is Lamb. It comes in front, and the puck tipped to center ice. Back forward is Joseph. He came up as a teenager with the Pittsburgh Penguins. He'll shoot the puck in, and Stevens back for it. Scott Stevens is on defense with Paul Cavallini. Here's a left wing pass to Momesso on a line with Ronning and Kimball. Kimball over the Edmonton line, leaves the puck for Ronning. Over to Stevens, moving in. He'll shoot right on, and a save by Pokey Reddick, and he holds the puck for a faceoff. Down to 7.25 to go in this first period. 1-0. The Blues lead it. This is St. Louis Blues Hockey. There's something wacky at McDonald's. A uh, Big Mac. The Tiny Toon Adventures Gang. Babs and Buster Bunny. And Persian. Fries. Ooh, <laughs> A Diet Coke and... Uh, 100 Happy Meals. 100 Happy Meals. French lunch. I mean, one Happy Meal. Now buy your kid a hamburger Happy Meal at McDonald's for just $1.99 and get a Tiny Toon flip car. Collect all four, get all eight. 100 Happy Meals, sir. Now what? Better pop the trunk. McDonald's Happy Meal, just $1.99. 26-year-old Pokey Reddick in nets tonight for Edmonton. He made a pretty good save there on Scott Stevens. Reddick, a little guy, 5'8", 170, hails from Halifax, Nova Scotia. And as we mentioned, Ken, only his second NHL game this year. He's been in the AHL. Played all over last year. Former Winnipeg Jet. Here come the Oilers. Boop boom over the line, into the corner, tries to center. Stevens knocks the puck down, and Scott ends up with it. Up the middle to Rich Sutter. Sutter with Lowry. Now into the Edmonton end. Sutter sets up to Jeff Brown. He'll go into the corner. Plays it around behind the Edmonton net. And the Oilers will come up with it. Smith gets it out to center ice to Seminoff. His pass in the middle poked away. And a loose puck at center ice. And it comes to Lowry. He's knocked down from behind. Hull gets it. Back to the St. Louis line to Stevens. I had four. Basson, not a Hull, who's checked and knocked down to Lowry. Lowry moving in. Shoots. Reddick out for a pad save. And Basson collides in the corner with Murphy. Muni comes in to take the puck away. He has it behind his net. He's run into, knocked down by Dave Lowry. A scramble for the puck behind the Oilers' net. 
and it's finally covered. The Blues on a Brett Hall goal lead it 1-0. This is St. Louis Blues hockey. Charlie, the Johnsons are having something delivered. Mm-hmm. It's a new air conditioner. That's nice, dear. What set them so great they'd buy it this early? Must be a Lennox. Reliable Heating and Cooling Company. They earn their name every day. So call Ken or Marilyn for quality Linux products. Don't take chances with your family's comfort. Call John, Kevin, or Norm at American Home Service Company. Now get cash back or 0% financing. Craig Muni, who has been one of the Oilers' steadiest defensemen in the last five and a half years, put a fierce hit on Brad Hall at center. Hall had the puck coming to the Oiler line. And Muni, who is one of the best open ice hitters in the NHL, knocked Hall down. And as he was getting up, he was shaking his head as, this, as if he was trying to get the cobweb webs out. But he's all right. One nothing for the Blues. And you can bet every time Hall's on the ice, the Oilers will pay close attention to him. I mentioned Tekin and will cover him every time out. He did a pretty good job on Mario Lemieux last night. Now the face-off to the left of the Edmonton net. Rick Mahar is on. He's on a line with Courtnall and Tuttle now. Kerry Fraser comes over and talks with Edmonton coach John Muckler. We can almost hear it, maybe hear a little too much from uh, John Muckler. I'm not sure, John, what Muckler is unhappy about. I think he wanted to make a change. The home team has allowed the last change. But Kerry Fraser says no more changes and will drop the puck to the right of Reddick. He just wants apparently to get Kelly Bookberger on. The faceoff, the puck comes to the line, kept in by Tuttle. To Mahar, who's taken down. And here comes Ken Linsman to center ice. Now taken and replaced by Bookberger. Moving in, Klima on the right wing, and a shot deflected wide by Riendo. Then Huddy shot from the point, knocked down, and the Blues to center ice, Courtnall. He takes a hip check from Huddy. Klima ends up with the puck. He'll circle back in his own zone and leave it there. Now the Oilers start out. Charlie Huddy plays it rink wide to Tikkanen. To Klima. He's tied up along the boards by Courtnall. And it's loose at center ice. Tikkanen gets it. Over the line to Klima. Not a Huddy. A shot right on. And Riendo a good save. Here's Jeff Courtnall with 5.40 to go in the opening period. He's checked at center ice. And the Oilers are stopped. Robert Dirk with a puck. Moves to the red line. Slides the puck in, and Courtnall takes a cruel hit from Muni. Long Steve Smith pass to Lindsman. Back to Smith in his own end. Over to Muni. 1-0. Blues lead it. Now to center ice. Teakin and checked by Brindamore. And the puck loose in front of the Blues bench. Glenn Anderson has it in his 11th season with the Oilers. Plays it back to the defense. Now up to Messier. Messier has missed. 19 games with a bad knee this season. He can't get around. Dirk at center ice. His bodies begin to fall. Out of a crowd comes Adam Oates. His pass for Hull broken up. Boop boom gets it ahead to Messier. He's stopped. Now the Blues are stopped and Smith moves in. Smith to Messier and a shot quickly blocked. And here come the Blues. Brindamore leads the rush to Hull. Three on two to Brindamore in front to Hull. And he's in too close to get a shot on Reddick, who clears to the corner. Jeff Boop Boom, an outlet pass to Tikkanen. Tikkanen drops it in the neutral zone for Anderson. Over the line, a drop pass for Lowe. Lowe looking so much that he can't handle the puck. And Hull clears it to center ice to Adam Oates. Behind the back pass to Paul Cavallini. He'll leave it in the neutral zone for Oates, who carries it in. The great playmaker to the point to Stevens. Now to Brindamore. He has Tikkanen all over him. Loose puck. Darren Kimball gets it to Paul Cavallini, and he fans on a wrist shot. And here's Joseph for Edmonton. Right wing to McTavish. He's stopped by Stevens, who shovels the puck ahead to Brindamore. Up the left wing, over the line, and a shot. That goes off a stick and wide, and off the boards to Reddick. And the Oiler goalie gloves it and holds it for a faceoff. 3.57 to go in the first period. 1-0 Blues. This is St. Louis Blues hockey. You know, I never thought I'd buy a car from an American company. But they saw this new small tracer from Mercury. It's built great loaded with features and it has more room than Nissan Sentra, Toyota Corolla and Honda Civic and at about $900 less than Nissan, $640 less than Toyota and $285 less than Honda. I guess you could say Tracer opened my mind to Mercury. 
and closed it on those imports. See your Lincoln Mercury dealer today for $500 customer cash on 91 Tracer. Oilers captain Mark Messier on the bench. Messier wants a new contract. Earlier, he had quite a collision near the Blues blue line. Gave Robert Dirk quite a shot. Messier currently makes $1.1 million a year, but he wants Gretzky-like numbers. He's asking for $2 million a year. So, again, the Oilers have another problem on their hands. Up to center ice, Mark Lamb, now to McTavish, into the blue zone. Great drop pass. Joseph shot right on. The save and the rebound tipped to center by Kimball. 3.40 to go in the first period. Kevin Lowe dumps the puck back in. Stevens retreats for it. Up to Momesso. Now to Ronnie at center ice. He feeds to an open right wing. Kimball gets to the puck. He's checked. Back to the defense to Brown. Now to Momesso. And the Blues trying to get organized. Tight checking. First period. It's the kind of period the Blues like to be involved in. Ronnie into the Edmonton zone to Rich Sutter. Behind the net for Momesso. He looks to center, does to Sutter. He's unable to get a shot, has to circle. Now leaves the puck in the corner. Ronning gets it to Momesso. Back to Ronning. Blues sending it up. Ronning trying to spin away from Lamb. Pinched to the boards. Keeps control of the puck. Ronning now to Sutter. Into the corner to Momesso. Blues need to get the puck in front of the net, but are unable to. Momesso pinched to the boards. Sutter tries to center and can't. And a loose puck comes to the Oilers, and they start out. Here they come. Dave Brown, now to McTavish, over the line. He can't get a shot away as he's covered well by Brown and Stevens. To Tuttle at center ice, he'll flip the puck in, and both teams are changing on the fly. Putty behind his net for Edmonton. Up to Seminoff. Blues lead it one to nothing. Seminoff avoids the Lowry check. Gets the puck to Adam Graves. Now to Joe Murphy. Into the offensive zone. He'll backhand the puck behind the net. Snips has Graves tied up. It's centered, but the centering pass by Seminoff is by Steve Smith, and the puck slides all the way to Muni in his own end. Ahead to Seminoff. Right wing to Joe Murphy, and the puck pops over his stick, slides to Riendo. He clears it to Featherstone, but Seminoff steals. Then behind the net, he's stripped of the puck by Sneps. Sneps in the corner. Ahead to Tuttle. He's hit, but clears the puck to center ice. Boop boom for Edmonton. Over to Seminoff. Now to Murphy. Murphy over the line. Knocked down by Featherstone in front of Graves. Backhand shot and a great save by Riendo on Adam Graves. Here's Smith. Right point to Boop boom and that shot deflects wide off Sneps. Murphy unable to center. A minute 35 to go in the period. Hall gets the puck over to Lowry and he'll tip it down into the Edmonton end. The two teams change again. Blues out shooting the Oilers 10-8, leading at 1-0. First period. Tikkanen in over the line to Klima. Back to Tikkanen. Tikkanen can't get around Paul Cavallini. Smith at the point. Slides the puck behind the St. Louis net, and only Adam Oates is there. Here's Oates to Cantlin in his own end. Passes it ahead to Brindamore. Brindamore drops it over the line to Oates. He's spun around by Klima, and Steve Smith gets the puck. He comes to center ice. Steve Smith looking for help. Circles back into his own end. Blues lead 1-0 on Brett Hall's goal. Under a minute to play in the first period. Hall almost steals from Smith. Then Joseph gets it to Smith at center ice. He flips it ahead. Dirk knocks the puck down. Passes it off Oates to Hall. He can't make a play. And here comes Peter Klima. Over the line to low. In front for Lindsman. And great work back checking by Brindamore, who clears the puck into the Edmonton end. Blues are changing. Oilers start to center ice. Kevin Lowe, the all-star defenseman, in over the line. Loses the puck, and Rich Sutter has possession. Sutter from behind his net into the corner to Stevens. He has trouble with the puck, but is able to get away from Klima. Gets to center ice. Now to Sutter. 13 seconds to go in the period. Sutter over the Edmonton line. Sutter into the corner. Sutter behind the net. Tries to center, and the puck ends up on top of the goal. Knocked off the top of the net by Oates. He's unable to move it in front. One second to go, and there's the siren. That is the end of the first period. And the only goal in that period against Pokey Reddick, scored by the Blues, Brett Hall, early in the period. Brett Hall getting goal number 59. Jeff Cortnall drew the assist. A very good period for the Blues. They did not allow the Oilers to freewheel, which is something they're very capable of doing. After 20 minutes, the Blues won, and the Oilers no score. This is St. Louis Blues Hockey. Brett Hall's 
early first period goal is the difference in this one as the two teams are back on the ice here at the Northlands Coliseum for the start of the second period. Ken Wilson along with John Kelly. Glad you're with us tonight in Edmonton. Elsewhere, Buffalo and Quebec skated to a 4-4 tie at Quebec. Minnesota at New York. That one, 5-4 Islanders. Winnipeg at Detroit. The Red Wings win at 6-1. They scored five times in the third period. And Calgary is playing tonight at Los Angeles. Well, the Blues play in Vancouver and Calgary before coming home. The next home action next Tuesday night, the 19th, against Toronto. That'll be Kodak photo card night. Then Thursday, the 21st, the New York Islanders in for Youth Jersey Night. And Saturday, February 23rd, the Boston Bruins will be at the arena. That'll be our next TV game, 434-6600. Dial ticks for tickets. Second period here in Edmonton, and here's John Kelly. Thank you, Ken. The Blues lead 1-0 off the draw. Sutter moves into the Oilers zone. Here's Rich Sutter in the slot. Good pass to Lowry. He gets turned around, and Reddick split out and knocked it away. Now steps to the left point. He pokes one wide. Steve Smith behind his own net, right in front, lost at center, a shot, save rebound, Bassett, hit the goal post. Oh, Bassett hit the post, and now Reddick grabs the puck after Steve Smith made a bad play coming in front of his own net, and the Blues very nearly made it 2-0. Well, just 25 seconds in, and Reddick had to be very alert. I don't know where Smith thought he was going to go, and Rich Sutter... Got a shot away that almost went through the legs of Reddick. And then the rebound right at the post. And Reddick able to smother it. Bill Ranford re-injured his back last night in the third period. He's not dressed tonight. Kerry Taco, the former Minnesota North Stars goaltender, is Edmonton's backup goalie tonight. Grant Fjord will rejoin the Oilers next Monday night in New Jersey. John Muckler says he can't get back fast enough. Well, he played tonight his first game in the American Hockey League. He beat Rochester 5-3, stopping 41 of 44 shots. So I guess Fuhr is in pretty good shape already. Blues lead here 1-0 early second period. Kevin Lowe behind the Oilers' goal. Up on right wing to Murphy. He's got great speed. He comes to center. In for Graves on right wing. Into the corner. Now steps back there. Knocked it away. And Bassin for the Blues there. He was checked by Semenov. Anatoly Semenov, the Soviet. Lost it. And Bassin starts back on left wing. Ahead for Lowry. He'll bat it into the Oilers zone. Low behind his own goal. Pass at center ice for Graves. The former Red Wing. His long dump in. Goes behind the Blues goal. Now Riendo plays it. But the puck was knocked down with a high stick by a Blues player. So there will be a faceoff to the right of Riendo. You know, talking about Grant Fuhr, that 5-3 win, Cape Breton over Rochester tonight. Rochester may be the best team in the American Hockey League this season. And Fuhr could be busy. They play just about every other night. They've got three more games this week before Fuhr meets up with the Oilers in New Jersey. Adam Graves coming off for Edmonton. One of their younger players, he's just 22 years of age, came up originally with the Detroit Red Wings. And, of course, the Oilers with one of the true veterans in the National Hockey League, a fellow who wears number 13, Ken Lindsman. He just seems to have about 13 lives in the National Hockey League. Great face-off man, feisty, and uh, a very good defensive hockey player. In his 13th year, Blues lead 1-0. Oilers get the draw. Shot from the left point by Smith goes wide. Now Scott Stevens behind the Blues goal. He makes a move. Muscles the puck to center to Quartnell. Into the Oilers zone, but Sutter was in offside, or rather Mahar in offside on left wing. What Courtnell's picked it up in the last couple of weeks. He has seven goals in his last nine games, and he's been a streaky player all his career. He assisted on the game's only goal, Hall's goal, at 228 in the first period, but seven goals, three assists in the last eight games for Jeff Courtnell in his first season with the team. Of course, played the last few years in Washington with the Capitals. He is on a line with Rick Mahar and Steve Tuttle. Kirtner also spent a year here in Edmonton. Blues have a 1-0 lead. We've played a minute 35 of this second period. Off the draw of the Oilers, Kelly Bookberger at his own line for Steve Smith. 
His pass. It escape. It goes to Buckberger in on left wing. Centers it. Riendo knocked it wide. In behind the Blues goal. Lindsman is there. Can't center. And Scott Stevens works the puck up on left wing. Gets to center. Gets by Lindsman now for Courtneau. Into Stevens to a bad angle. And behind the play, we have a high sticking penalty. I assume it's against the Blues because they had the puck. This is St. Louis Blues hockey. Because Southwest Airlines has so many daily flights, this is the kind of sophisticated equipment that helps keep us on schedule. So is this. Southwest Airlines will save you time and money. At Southwest Airlines, we have the newest pure jet fleet in the airline industry. In fact, our fleet of Boeing 737s averages just six years of age, just like some of our favorite customers. Southwest Airlines, the youngest fleet in the air. Ken Lindsman of the Oilers will go off. The time of the penalty, 2.03, a high sticking penalty. And the Blues, who are 0 for 1 on the power play, will have the man advantage. Cordenal coming up the ice. Stevens got the puck, spun around, and somewhere along the way, Lindsman high sticks somebody. So say the officials. And I, there's some confusion, there's no question, because the Blues had the puck. Then they're going to have the faceoff at center ice, whereas not where the penalty took place. And now they're getting an announcement, so we get it straightened out. What did they announce? The reason they blew the whistle, the Blues, Riendo came off too early, or in, in other words, the substitute went on too early for Riendo and they blew it down. That's why. I've never really seen that called. Yeah, that's interesting. Where the sixth attacker, attacker goes on too early, so they blow the play dead. Anyhow, the Blues in a power play with a 1-0 lead. McTavish at his own line breaks it up. He'll play one to the St. Louis blue line. Right, or Jeff Brown there. He'll hammer one in. Far side. Oates there. Can't get to it. And the puck goes down the ice. As Brown goes back for the Blues, coming off that great performance against the Kings, he had four assists on Saturday. Now it's center to Cliff, running across the line to Brindamore. In the slot, back to Ronnie, knocked away. And Mark Lamb tipped it over the glass. And we get a face-off outside the line. This Blues power play has been vastly improved of late, jumping up to 11th overall in the league and successful just about... 20% of the time. And of course, Edmonton killing penalties is pretty much in the middle of the pack in the uh, National Hockey League. As a matter of fact, the Blues, six power play goals in their last 14 opportunities. And they've risen, as Ken mentioned, to 11th overall. Blues lead 1-0. Here they come. Oates in on right wing. Pass in for Brindamore. Can't get to it. Now to Ronnie. He can't shoot it. Back on the point, Brown gets it. Across to Hull, he wasn't ready for it, but Hull kept it in. Here's Ronnie on right wing. Centers it, but Brindamore can't get to it. And the Oilers, Bukaboom feeds one to Murphy at center. Into the blue zone, Murphy, a shot. That's blocked by Oates, and back comes Ronnie at center ice to Brown. Up for Brindamore across the Edmonton line. Now to Cliff Ronnie, he'll shoot one to the far side, then he was knocked down by Bukaboom. Here's Oates back on the point. Across for Brown. Back to Oates. Now to Jeff Brown on the point. Right wing for Oates. Back to Brown. To Hull has time. Oh, he never got a shot away. Now Brown again. Let's it go. They score. Brindamore, I think, tipped it in. And the Blues lay 2-0 as they score on the power play. The Blues that time doing what they have to do. Any team has to do with a man advantage. Move the puck around a lot. They really wanted Hull to shoot from the left wing, but the pass was out of his reach a little bit. Had to play it in his skates. But he has the wherewithal to get it back straight away at the point to Jeff Brown. He keeps it low, which enables the shot to more easily be deflected. And Brindamore right in front of Reddick for that very purpose. And he just seemed to deflect it right through the legs of the Edmonton goalie. And the Blues get a power play goal to lead two to nothing. Ronnie was there as well. Well, the Blues lead 2-0. Brindamore did tip it in. Now the Oilers work in. Here's Joseph. Bad angle. Centers one. That goes wide. Puck behind the Blues goal. 
Mameso there for St. Louis. He's tied up by Messier, but steps for St. Louis. At center for Kimball. He lost it. Brown and Hull get the assist on Brindamore's 11th of the year. And now the whistle blows. And icing called on Edmonton. So it's 2-0 Blues as Brindamore scores in the power play. This is St. Louis Blues hockey. Come share the spirit of a distant land in Florida at Bush Gardens. Right, celebrate the day. Celebrate. Celebrate the life you live. Let your soul play. Let your soul sing. Let your soul laugh. Let your soul love. Let your soul dance. Your soul is filled with happiness when the day comes to an end. The adventure of Africa, the warmth of Florida, and Bush Gardens, Tampa Bay, no place else. Paul scores in the first period. Brindamore scores here in the second period on a power play. And the Blues lead it two to nothing. Keep in mind this Edmonton team scores a lot of goals. They had seven last night against the Blues now in over seven periods this season. They have managed only three goals. Oh, Lowry off the pace off a shot and a glove saved by Reddick as Batson controlled the draw. And Pokey Reddick had to be alert with that left glove. Boy, those face-offs. You don't know how important that is. It's just more, you can talk about it all you want, but really only a coach knows. Blues get the draw again. Lowry back to Paul Cavalini. A shot. Rudick a save, and he holds on as both Lowry and Bassin were looking for a rebound. You can own a deluxe satellite system for $1,995. Shipment can be sent anywhere in the U.S. Call our good friends at Arnold Satellite Systems at 1-800-727-2911 for your deluxe satellite system. Let's pause five seconds for station ID. This is St. Louis Blues Hockey. You're watching Blues Hockey on KPLR-TV, St. Louis 11. Well, off the draw, I think we'll get penalties here. Joseph and Basson go to the boxes as they we're scrapping off the draw. Blues lead 2-0. This is St. Louis Blues Hockey. I check for a living, and I've been checking out the deals at your Midwest GMC dealers. These GMC Suburbans are legendary. This is the place for room. Two or four-wheel drive, rear anti-lock brakes, flush interior, and tow packages up to 9,500 pounds. They've got hundreds to choose from. Your Midwest GMC dealers, another reason why GMC Suburbans are number one. Check them out. Only at Bellman GMC in North County, Bomberito GMC in Ellisville, and Brocklin GMC in Fairmont City, Illinois. Masson and Joseph get roughing penalties. Meanwhile, the linesman Sweet Knox in that last faceoff was hurt, and he's struggling just to skate. Blues lead 2-0. Teams at full strength. Here comes Huddy for Edmonton into the blue zone, but Semenov, the Soviet player, was in offside. On left wing, he had a big night last night against the Penguins. Two goals and one assist. So the faceoff will be out in the center ice area. Boy, the, really a plethora of Soviet players coming into the National Hockey League. And for the most part, it's not taking them that long to adjust. A lot of people felt that uh, most of them would have a hard time adjusting to the NHL style of play. And, especially to play in so many games compared to the Soviet League, but it really hasn't proven to be that way. A long shot from Huddy, a pad saved by Riendo. Blues lead 2-0 as we approach the five-minute mark of the second period. Now Tuttle works into the Edmonton zone on right wing. To Mahar, centers to Quartino, knocked away. Paul Cavani trying to keep it in. He lost it, and back is Semenov on right wing. To the Blues line for Huddy. He was checked from behind, and the Blues start back. Here's Tuttle ahead for Paul Cavalini to Mahar across the line. Drop pass, Courtnell a drive, a save by Reddick on a rocket from Courtnell. And back the other way is Craig Muni. Long dump in, picked up by Graves near corner. Graves behind the goal. Centers, but Mahar there to break it up. And Mahar lead pass to Courtnell. Off his stick and teak it in for the Oilers at center. Here's Messier in on right wing. In front, Anderson can't get it. Strip does a shot by Messier. Riendo a save. Rebound. Another save by Riendo on Anderson as he was stopped from close in. Two good stops there by Riendo. 
Now back on the point, Smith for Anderson. Works into the slot. Now behind the goal. Centers it, but Messier can't get to it. And back come the Blues. Here's Oates, one-on-one. -on -one. Into the Edmonton zone. He can't go around Steve Smith as this game opens up. Back to center. Here's a pass to Anderson in on left wing. To Steve Smith, a shot. And that goes wide. Now Tekin in on right wing. Plays one behind the Blues goal. Anderson picks it up. He's checked by Hull. Can't clear it. Messier. Now to Tekin in, in front. Here's Messier. A shot. And that pass actually was blocked by Stevens. And the Blues clear it down the ice after some pretty good chances by the Oilers. Icing called. The Blues still lead 2-0. This is St. Louis Blues Hockey. Charlie, the Johnsons are having something delivered. Mm-hmm. It's a new air conditioner. That's nice, dear. What system's so great, they'd buy it this early? Must be a Lennox. For quality service and installation, call Robert or Tom at Donahue Heating and Cooling. Our commitment is customer satisfaction. Call us for a free estimate. Mike, Joe, and Jay Barrett, the fourth generation of Barrett's to serve the greater Alton area with expert sales and service of quality products. Now get cash back or 0% financing. Play opening up quite a bit, and that's not something the Blues like to see. They have a 2-0 lead. They've outshot Edmonton 16-12. The Oilers have had some very good chances. Moments ago, Messier had a great chance. Riendo, a terrific sliding save. These fellas have some scores. You've got to play tough. Face off right of Riendo. The Oilers get it back low. A shot. That was nowhere near the net. And the Messo back on left wing. He's pumped by Bookberger. Now Featherstone back in his own zone. Klima on him. Featherstone, a blind pass. Knocked down and kept in by low. Now bring them more for the Blues. In behind his net, four steps. And Snaps, a native of Edmonton, clears one to center. Klima for the Oilers. His pass behind everyone. Loose puck taken by Joseph. His pass knocked down. And back come the Blues. Kimball across the Edmonton line. Shoots one to the far corner. Mameso there. Now Brindamore on right wing gets the puck. Here's Brindamore in the slot. A shot. That's blocked. And Brindamore trying to keep it in, he does, but now it's knocked to center by Joseph for Lindsman into the blue zone. Drop pass for Klima, and that shot blocked by Featherstone, and back is Brindamore. Late feed ahead, Kimball can't get to it. Now Glenn Anderson back for the Oilers. He works in on left wing. Anderson has men in front, a pass in front. Messier stopped from close in, and the Blues take over. Here's Mameso back the other way. Long shot, Redick a glove save, and he himself passes the puck to center for Anderson. The Blues lead 2-0, 12 minutes left, second period. Back comes Muni. He'll play one in behind the Blues goal. Dirk is there, and Dirk just clears it high over the glass, and we get a face-off. Folks, remember, when you're having good times with good friends, drink responsibly, because friends know when to say when. A reminder from your friends, at Budweiser. Edmonton has had a number of good chances here recently. Moments ago, the puck came right in front, and again, it was Messier, not at a very good angle, then centered it, and the Blues able to clear the puck away, but things have opened up a little bit. Uh, the Blues have gotten some very good bounces the last four or five minutes in their own zone. Blues have a 2-0 lead, but the Oilers get to draw Muni a shot. Save Riendo, big rebound in front. And Lowry there to knock it away. For Sutter, can't clear it. Messier to Semenov. A shot he scores! Semenov, and it's 2 1. This crowd here in Ed Edmonton finally has something to scream about. The Blues could not clear the zone. And Semenov just buries one by Riendo, who has little or no chance at all. And for Semenov, that is number 10. And it cuts the Blues' lead to 2-1. to one. Boy, you could just see it coming, though. The Blues were not getting the puck out of their own end. The Oilers were getting all sorts of opportunities. And it just seemed like it was a matter of time until the Oilers would get on the board. And the Blues have to regroup here now. 
So Messier assist on the goal by Semenov. His 10th of the year at 8.22. And that cuts the Blues lead to 2-1. Now off the draw, the Blues attacking Courtenau to Mahar in the near corner. Mahar in the slot. Now for Tuttle, a shot. That's blocked. Courtenau there, pokes it in front. And the Oilers, Adam Graves in his own zone. Pass to Murphy up on right wing. Murphy at center for McTavish. In across the line for Steve Smith. A shot, he missed the net on the short side. Puck kept in by Bukaboom. Now McTavish. Right wing for Murphy in front, but Stevens knocked it away. And the Blues take over. Here's Courtney on left wing. He'll play it off the glass, back down the ice. 10.52 to go in the second period. 2-1 for the Blues. Here they come. Oates across the line. Drop pass. Knocked away. And now Murphy back to the Blues line. Drop pass for Graves. In front of backhander. And that's off a of leg and wide. Oilers have pressure on here. Lowe kept it in for the left point. Stevens behind the Blues net around the boards. Here's on the right point. Joseph a shot blocked. Puck kept in again by Joseph. Here's Jeff Brown for the Blues. Brown works his way to center ice. Pass ahead, knocked down by Tikkanen. Tikkanen a pass for Lindsman into the blue zone. He works in on right wing. Now behind the net. Puts it in front, Klima there, back to low. That shot is blocked. And Courtneau there. Left it for Brown. Brown across the Edmonton line. Had it knocked away. Blues can't get anything going in the offensive zone. Here at center, Dirk for the Blues, makes a good play. Clears it over the boards, though, at the Blues bench. The Blues lead 2-1. This is St. Louis Blues hockey. I wish Mom could be here. You know how tough it would be on her. It's a bus. Maybe I shouldn't go. You know, it's something we've always dreamed of. It's just that it's so far away. It's a good college. You'll do fine. Don't forget to write. <laughs> Once a week to your mother. Hey, you need any money? Just let me know. Brian Sutter urging on his players. The Blues have not played very well in this period, though they took a two nothing lead early on a Brindamore goal. Seminoff has come back to cut the lead to two to one. But the Oilers have really rush the Blues defenseman a lot more in this period. Four check much better. They have been pinching in and been very aggressive with the defenseman, not allowing the Blues to get out of their own zone and also clogging up the middle. And as John pointed out, offensively recently, the Blues have really not been able to do anything. 2-1, the Blues still lead. Face off at center. Now Dirk in his own line, a pass blocked. Paul gets it at his own line for Paul Cavallini. His pass for Oates off his state skate rather, and Klima grabs it. He's dangerous into the blue zone. Dirk knocked it away, kept in though. Low a shot, and a pass saved by Riendo. In behind the net, Tikin in for the Oilers. Looks to center it. Now Tikin in on right wing. Hooked at by Paul Cavallini, and Cavallini broke it up. And back come the Blues. Here's Oates with Hull. Oates to center into Hull on right wing. A shot. He missed the net from a bad angle. Steps trying to hold it in. He does. But now Lindsman for Edmonton. Long pass to Klima broken up. And Paul Cavalini feeds Brindamore at center ice. He's knocked down by Lowe. Now Brindamore gets up. Lost it. And the puck played into the Oilers zone. Chris Joseph there for Anderson. A lead pass to Messier. In on left wing. A shot and he missed the net on the far side. And Mameso there to clear it back to center ice. Played back in by Tekin in offside. So, Hall and Brindamore score for the Blues. Seminoff has come back and scored for Edmonton. And the Oilers have changed the tempo of this game here in the second period. You talk about the fact that the Oilers tend to want to freewheel and skate more. John Muckler says when a good defensive team like the Blues holds you down in shots and opportunities, and that's basically what's happened tonight, Edmonton only with 15 shots on goal. He says we can play that way because we understand we have to be patient. We understand we have to wait for our opportunities and try to win 3-2. to two. Blues lead 2-1. 
8.28 to go in the second period. Now it's center Mameso for the Blues. Long shot from the line. A glove saved by Reddick. Buddy plays one to the far side for Semenov. At center for Anderson. Back to Semenov across the line. Drop pass. Anderson, a weak shot, a stick save. Riendo. And running gets the puck in the far corner. For Kimball at center ice to Jeff Brown. Now Brown ahead to running across the line. Running in the slot. Looks for an open man. A pass for Stevens. That goes too far. Now Stevens behind the Edmonton goal. Far corner for Mimeso. He'll play one in deep, and Muni picks it up for the Oilers. Here's Craig Muni back to center. To their captain, Messier, into the blue zone. Shoots it well wide. Now on the near side, Bukaboom kept it in. In the corner, Basson digs it free for the Blues. Here's Basson up on right wing for Kimball. Across center, he'll play it down the ice. Reddick behind the goal, fires one to the far side. Graves there. And he just slides it off the boards down the ice. Robert Dirk back for the Blues. There's Dirk. Pass up the middle. Held in by Graves. Long shot wide. And Sutter again on right wing. His pass hit Graves and stayed in. Now Paul Cavallini ahead. And it's tipped to center by Sutter. Seven minutes left in the second period. The Blues have a slim 2-1 lead. Now it's center Paul Cavallini. Up to Lowry to haul back to Lowry too far. And Steve Smith for the Oilers. Wax it off the glass to center. Wristed right back in by Paul Cavallini. Here's Steve Smith. Pass for McTavish. He gets to center the former Bruin in the blue zone to Murphy in a slot, but Snaps knocked it away. Lowry there for the Blues. And he works the puck to center ice. Now Snaps at his own line. Over for Featherstone. Gets to center for Lowry. Now for Oates in across the line. Hull is there, but he can't go around Murphy. And here's McTavish into the blue zone. This game wide open. McTavish on left wing. Knocked off the puck by Featherstone. A centering pass, and Klima missed the tip in. Now Tekin, a shot. That's blocked by Stevens. And now behind the play, I think we'll get penalties here, possibly against Lowry or Klima or both. The Blues lead 2-1. This is St. Louis Blues Hockey. I'm thinking of a steak. A thick, choice, juicy steak. Or maybe it'll be seafood, lobster, or swordfish. Chops sound good, too. Pork, lamb, or veal. And for dessert, oh, this isn't fair. It's time to eat. I'm out of here. We hope to see you soon at Deerdorf and Hearts, the choice of St. Louis, in Westport Plaza and Union Station. Penalties here. Lowry and Klima each get two minutes for slashing here at 13.57 of the second period with the Blues up 2-1. to one. And both teams remain at full strength with the coincidental penalties here. And the Blues maintain a 2-1 lead. Now Jeff Portnoy at his own line for the Blues. Gives it away at center. Semenov flips it in. Brown behind his goal. Near corner for Stevens. He'll play one ahead. It bounces down the ice. Mahar after it, but Lowe gets back, and Kevin Lowe gets to the puck first. So an icing call here on St. Louis. You know, you might wonder, why did the Oilers get off to such a slow start? Well, Nessa Tikkanen had knee surgery, missed most of training camp. Martin Jelena was hobbled by a shoulder problem. Peter Klima had a suspension. Yari Curry, of course, left, took off, went to Italy. Mark Messier had the knee problems, and all of a sudden, this team was 2-11-2. They didn't score at all. They had a nine-game losing streak, but their goals against during that stretch was pretty good. They just couldn't score. But once they got Messier back, got rolling, they've gone 26-14-1. and one. That's a 6-4-6 six, six pace, which is basically the pace the Blues have had all year. So this team, Edmonton, once they got going, has been as good as any team in the entire league. Blues lead 2-1, 5-30 left in the second period. And now a two-line offside pass from one Oiler to another and a face-off. This game tonight is brought to you by your local McDonald's restaurants, where there's always food 
folks and fun. 2-1 Blues lead it. Paul has scored. Brindamore has scored. And Semenov has replied for the Oilers. Of course, the Blues won here in October, beat the Oilers in November in St. Louis. But it is tough to win here, and it has been for the Blues. They've played 18 times here at the Northlands Coliseum and won only four games. Here's a long shot from center by Paul Cavalini. That's grabbed by Reddick. Blues ahead here, 2-1. to one. Joseph behind his net for Edmonton. For low in the far corner, ahead for Semenov. He'll flip it down the ice. And Dirk back in his own zone. Robert Dirk up to Sutter. But Sutter can't clear. Messier, a shot, a blocker saved by Riendo. And Paul Cavalini clears it ahead. Kept in again. Here's Paul again behind his net. Up on left wing to Mameso. Big Sergio ahead for Bassett. Two on two through center. Bassett to Mameso in the slot. Bass in there. Can't get a shot. And back to center. Semenov with Lindsman. A pass to Lindsman in front. And it's over his stick. Now Semenov on right wing. His long shot right on. A save by Riendo. And the puck poked ahead by Mameso. And it goes to center. Kevin Lowe at his own line for Edmonton. Here's low to Murphy. Into the blue zone around Dirk. A shot he scores! Joe Murphy! And it's 2-2. Two -two. No secret what Edmonton is doing. They're forechecking two men deep. Only one forward is coming back. They're not letting the Blues penetrate the Oilers' line. And then in the transition, Edmonton basically has two forwards up in the St. Louis line. On this play, one of them was Joe Murphy. And he breaks in behind Dirk to beat Riendo and to tie it. You combine two men feverishly forechecking, which Edmonton has been doing consistently, keep your point men up. The play before the last for Edmonton started when Lowe stayed up. And you really cause fits for the Blues defensemen in their own end. Now the Blues, Brindamore works in, but that's called back on an offside. And the faceoff back to center. So Murphy's 20th has tied the game at two. This is St. Louis Blues hockey. Common misconceptions about the mountain man. Three, that a mountain man's best friend is his horse. Two, that a mountain man only packs a six gun and one that a mountain man only has one favorite beer actually mountain men are known to favor both smooth bush beer and easy drinking bush light so head for the mountains and find out how a real mountain man preserves wildlife 2-2 two -two now murphy from low and seminoff at 1535 after Semenov scored at 8.22 from Messier. So the Blues 2-0 lead has evaporated. Here's Featherstone in the blue zone. Up on left wing for Brindamore off his stick. Now loose puck picked up by Oates. Back into the Edmonton zone. He's checked by Muni. And Huddy there ahead for McTavish. Broken up by Stevens. Stevens for Hull near the Oiler line. That's knocked away. Now McTavish again. Gets away from Oates into the blue zone. Now for Murphy behind the goal. McTavish there. He was held up in Rod Brindamore for the Blues. He'll flip it back to center. Putty at his own line. It's 2-2. 3.32 to go in the period. Muni behind his net. For Huddy on left wing ahead. And it's tipped to center by Tekanen. Scott Stevens for the Blues. To Featherstone. Glenn Featherstone back ahead in four outs across the line in the slot. A quick shot by Brindamore and Redick a save on Brindamore. Puck behind the Oiler goal. Oates knocked it off the mesh. Try to center he did. And now it's held by Redick. As that puck was on the mesh and Oates knocked it free, I think the Oilers hey, thought there was going to be a faceoff. I'll tell you, Reddick really almost got caught. Had that puck come out in front, he would have been in trouble. And that's what Tikkanen is talking about, the fact that there should have been a whistle or the Oilers felt that there would have been a whistle. Now both teams are going to change players as Kerry Frazier, the referee, explains to Pokey Reddick. And I think he's saying something like, look, it was only two, three seconds, and it's my judgment. 
It wasn't there long, so I didn't blow the whistle. We talked about the Oilers and how tough they have been to beat over the years here. In fact, they're very, very strong here lately. They won four of their last five and eight of their last ten here at home. Oh, Steve Smith, another dangerous play in front of his own net. Gets to center to Messi, broken up by Mahar. He can't work ahead. Here in a 2-2 game, three minutes to go in the period. Jeff Brown at his own line for Mahar. He'll tip it in. Buku Boom back for Edmonton. Gave it right to Quartnell. Jeff Quartnell for the blue. Slides in in front, but no one there. And the Oilers come back. Steve Smith to Anderson. In on right wing. Left it for Seminoff. Behind the net, trying to work in front, knocked away by Riendo. And Tuttle gets it ahead. Kept in. Here's Anderson on right wing. Anderson in the blue zone for Messier in deep. He's bumped by Dirk and Brown. Feeds one to Tuttle on right wing. He can't clear it away. Well, the Blues have been really sloppy in this period. Tuttle ahead to Mahar. No backhand one to the Oiler line. Joseph there gave it right to Tuttle. Back he comes on right wing. Here's Steve Tuttle. Centers one to Quartnell. A shot! And he missed the net. What a chance there for Quartnell. And the puck cleared down the ice. Paul Cavalini goes back. That icing called here on Edmonton. And I think we might get a high sticking penalty in the process or elbowing. Terry Fraser will call the penalty here for high sticking. And it'll be against the Oilers, Anatoly Semenov. In this game, he has scored a goal and assisted on the tying goal, and Semenov will go off here at 18.05. And the Blues, who scored their second goal here in this period on a power play, now will have the man advantage here, tied at two. Well, this could be very pivotal here because there's no question the Oilers have taken this period away from the Blues. The Blues have, on one hand, been sloppy, especially in their own end. On the other hand, give the Oilers some marks because they have really forechecked well and really just caused havoc for the Blues in their own end. And when the Blues have gotten out of their own end, they basically haven't been able to penetrate the Edmonton defense at the Oilers' line. But here's an opportunity now for the Blues to get some offensive movement going and, and maybe even get a goal that'll send them to the dressing room with the lead. Right now it's tied off the draw. Here's Brown working in. Pass across, Hulk tipped it wide. Now running on right wing, back for Oates. Two running again on right wing, into the corner for Brindamore. Looks to center, back on the point for Brown. Here's Brown across for Oates. Far corner for Brindamore. In the slot, Hull is there, can't get turned around, and McTavish for Edmonton. He'll clear it off the boards. Into the blue zone, McTavish, a shot, and he put it wide, and the Blues come back the other way. Led by Oates, three on two to Brindamore. Into Oates, right in, to Hull in front. Never got a shot. Here's Hull again. Back on the point for Brown. Right wing for Oates. Back to Jeff Brown. Two Oates on the wing to Hull. A shot blocked by Muni in front. And the shot never got through. And Teakin in for Edmonton, clears it down the ice. A minute left in the period. It's 2-2. Here are the Blues in the power play. Back to center. Oates through the middle. Now to Brett Hall in the right wing, has some room, a shot, he put it wide, what a rocket there. Left point, Stevens kept it in. Near corner for Cliff Ronnie. Ronnie trying to work in front. Behind the goal, Smith knocked it away and then Ronnie knocked down and a boarding call here on Edmonton and Ronnie is really off his skates, but I think he's all right. That's the second or third shot that Ronning has taken against the boards in this period, and he just kind of shaking his head to get the cobwebs out. He has really been run a few times, and this time, Jeff Bukaboom will take the penalty. Boy, Ronning got his head just jammed into the boards. Very, very dangerous play, but he appears to be all right. And the Blues here now, for the final 37 seconds of this period, have a two-man advantage. They also actually have a two-man advantage for 42 seconds total. But of course, time will run out here in the period. So the opportunity increases for the Blues. And now the Blues apparently have called a timeout. And that's a good move 
with both Semenov and Bukovov in the penalty box. To set things up, the faceoff is going to come up in the circle near Pokey Reddick. So it's a good chance to really be clear on what you want to do. Ryan Sutter understanding the importance here of the final 37 seconds. It's not the same as the final 37 seconds of a game when you're tied, possibly, or trying to come back and get a tying goal. But it's just that the momentum has shifted so much to Edmonton in this period that this could be the opportunity to grab the game back and pick up the two points here. So they want to make sure they know what they're going to do on the faceoff, what everyone's role is, and really set things up, which gets you back to that point of how important faceoffs are. In the first period, if you were with us, you recall there were two or three, maybe four times where the Blues won crucial faceoffs near Pokey Reddick. And it resulted in some very good opportunities. And Adam Oates, John, is going to be the man here who will attempt to win this faceoff, set up some pressure, and try to break the tie with his two-man advantage. Faceoff to the right of Reddick. Oates, Cortnell, and Cortnell up front. Running on the far side. Hall gets the draw, or Oates gets the draw back to Brown. Into the corner behind the goal. Cliff running is there. He's bumped by Lowe. Lowe trying to clear it. Gets it for McTavish. He'll backhand it. Kept in by Oates. Now for Brown. Left wing to Hull. In the slot. Oates fakes it. Now to Cliff running a shot. And that's blocked by Muni. As he slid across. 16 seconds left. In the period. So the Blues really no shots on goal so far on the two-man advantage. But the Blues able to control from the faceoff will get the same opportunity. Ronning here is trying to slide the puck across to Brett Hall. That's exactly what Oates had in mind at the point. Don't shoot. Send it to the right side to Ronning. Unfortunately for Ronning, he had a body in the way as Hull was open. And again here with 16 seconds, the same situation. You have to win the faceoff. And Adam Oates' job is to do that. He's got Hall right behind him at the top of the circle. 16 seconds left. As McTavish will take the draw against Oates. Big faceoff. Lots of time if the Blues can control the draw. Here we go to the left of Reddick. Oates gets it. Back on the point. Here's Hall. Over for Brown. Brown. Right wing for Oates. Now to Brown. A shot. That's blocked in front by Muni. Five seconds left. Now Hull back to Oates. In the court. The right in a backhand. He scores! At the buzzer. The Blues score. And there could be an argument here. Courtney scored. There's no time on the clock. And Ken, we could have. The red light never came on. Now it's on. And we will have an argument. No doubt about it. Well, we've seen this before. You talk about a plan on what to do. The last 37 seconds, the Blues had it. They won two key faceoffs, got the goal, but was time out. The goal judge can talk to the officials at the scorer's bench, and that's exactly what's happening here. Kerry Frazier consulting with his linesman. I don't think the three on-ice officials really had any idea if the goal had scored before time had run out. There's no question it was very close and Kerry Fraser has to make the ultimate decision. And he says that the goal will count and now tries to explain it to Kevin Lowe. But the Blues score and it will apparently be at the 20, 20 minute mark. You really should say 1959 but no time showing and the Blues get a power play goal on a two-man advantage. Courtnall in front, and he slides the backhander by Pokey Reddick. Who made the play? Well, who's the fellow who won crucial faceoffs? Adam Oates. Looked right, passed left, and with Muni on his back, Courtnall scores to give the Blues a 3-2 lead. So it will count, and the Blues get a bit of a break, I guess you could say, and lead 3-2 after two. Coming up, we'll talk to Blues center iceman Ron Wilson. This is St. Louis Blues Hockey. 
Welcome back to the Northlands Coliseum here at Edmonton, Alberta. The Blues lead 3-2 after two periods. Hall scored number 59 in the first. Brindamore made it 2-0 on a power play. Semenov and Murphy came back to tie the game for Edmonton, but the controversy of the night, Courtnell's goal scored at 19.59 on a power play is 21st from Oates and Hall, and the Oilers argued, and a lot of fans here in Edmonton thought the goal was scored after the buzzer, but Kerry Fraser, the referee, after conferring with his linesman, they ruled that it was a goal, and the Blues take a 3-2 lead into the third period, and there still is a minute 23 to go in Bukaboom's 40 minors, so the Blues begin the period on the power play, and they're 2 of 4 in the power play tonight. Well, you can enter the black and blue rendezvous contest sponsored by the Post-Dispatch, Southwest Airlines, the Drake Hotel, and the Blues, and have a chance to see the Blues and Blackhawks both at home and on the road. Look in the Post-Dispatch for contest entry form and details. That's the black and blue rendezvous contest. You could win a trip to see the Blues and Blackhawks in Chicago. Well, the Blues leading after two, the record this year, 22-3-3. When trailing after two, the Oilers, four wins and 19 losses. And when Kerry Fraser skated back onto the ice here in Edmonton for the third, he was roundly booed. But the goal by Courtney stands. The Blues lead three, two after two. And to tell you about the third period, here's Ken Wilson. All right, John Kelly, the Blues have the man advantage. And the Oilers get the puck, play it to the Blues zone, and here's Oates with it. Across the rink to Brown. He'll shoot it in. Reddick slows the puck up behind the net. Now in the corner, Steve Smith to Huddy. Behind his goal, up to McTavish. He doesn't see the puck. Jeff Brown keeps it in at the left point. It goes over the head of Brindamore. Ends up behind the net. Smith chops it into the corner, skates after it, and shoots the puck the length of the ice. There's 50 seconds to go in the Blues' man advantage. They lead it 3-2. to two. Oates at center ice, over to Brown again. To the Edmonton line, he shoots the puck in. Lowe tries to clear it. Ronning intercepts. Ronning back to the point. Brown, a shot right on. Reddick the save. And the rebound to Messier. Boilers shorthanded. Right wing to Semenov. He tries to go around. Brown and is slowed up. And Ronning back for the puck in his own end. Misses a check. Falls down, loses the puck, Oates has it, loses it, Semenov, a backhander, and it goes just wide. Great chance for Semenov, shorthanded. Lowe keeps the puck in. Oates gets it for the Blues, up to Brindamore. His pass goes off Messier. Bukaboom ready to come back on. Now to Brown, Jeff Brown of the Blues. Long shot goes wide. Oilers are back at full strength. Hall keeps the puck in, can't get a shot. Semenov for Edmonton to Messier, inside the blue line, and a drive and a stick save by Riendo. Both teams changing players. Blues Mahar, stopped by Tikanen. He can't go anywhere. Here's Stevens at center ice. To Paul Cavallini, his pass to Hull. Now to Mahar, but it's offside. Courtnall goes in ahead of the puck, and the Blues leading it here, three to two. Good to see Rick Mahar back in the Blues lineup after missing, missing some games with a foot injury. And he's done a nice job tonight. Certainly the Oilers have done a great job containing Hall and Oates. Hall does have one goal tonight, and Oates has one assist, but they've contained the Blues' top guns all night. The Blues have stopped the Oilers' red-hot player, Peter Klima. Prior to this game, Klima had 11 goals in seven games, but he has been held without a goal or a point in this game. And he has only one shot, so the Blues have done a great job in containing Peter Klima. Klima on left wing, Lindsman at center. Anderson is the right wing, Blues tunnel, shoots the puck in. Bukaboom with it, behind the Edmonton net. Passes it away, now up to Steve Smith. Smith at the red line, into the St. Louis zone, and offside on the right wing is Ken Lindsman. And the second period, or third period, is two minutes, seven seconds old. Here the Blues lead 3-2. Other games tonight, Quebec and Buffalo final 4-4. The Islanders beat Minnesota 5-4. Big win for the Islanders. Detroit all over Winnipeg 6-1. And out west, the Kings lead Calgary 3-1. Blake Taylor and Robitaille have scored for Los Angeles. Here the Blues have a 3-2 lead. 
Of course, in the Smythe division, Los Angeles leading the way with 68 points. Calgary second with 65, and Edmonton third with 59 points. Blues lead it 3-2. to two. Oilers shoot the puck in. Riendo plays it to Tuttle in the corner. Tuttle, a long pass at center ice over Cortnall's stick. It slides to Reddick. He'll play it to Bukaboom in the corner. He's on defense with Steve Smith. Four pass. Mahar keeps it in. But the Oilers will take over. Smith, a pass too far for Lindsman. Now Scott Stevens. He'll shoot it right back in. 17 20 to go in the third. Steve Smith from behind his net for Edmonton. Up to Lindsman. He's slowed up by Bassett. Gives the puck to Klima. He'll golf it all the way back into his own zone. And here is Jeff Bukaboo. The six foot four inch defenseman gets it up to Anderson and as he had to move out of the way of Basson Lowry shoots the puck back in Boy, this line doing a magnificent job now the Blues changing here's Klima to Murphy around Hall Murphy a bad angle shot and that goes wide by less than a foot and the puck rebounds all the way back into the Edmonton end back forward is Chris Joseph the Oilers 21 year old defenseman he stick handles in his own end now it's center ice to Murphy. Left wing for McTavish, but he was yanked down. And there'll be a penalty. It'll be an interference penalty against Brett Hall. 3-2, the Blues lead it. This is St. Louis Blues hockey. Explore the majestic Serengeti in Florida at Bush Gardens. Wherever the sun blows, wherever the wind blows, wherever the water blows, Bush Gardens, Tampa Bay, Florida. No place else. Brett Hall picks up a rare minor penalty, only his 14th minute in penalties this year. And Edmonton trailing 3-2 on a power play. They're 0 for 1 tonight. And the power play is the big difference in the game. The Blues have two power play goals and four chances. And now Edmonton trying to tie the game. Messi up front with Anderson and Klima. Smith and Tekin in the point man. And Messi almost scores from the faceoff. And the Blues, Paul Cavallini shoots the puck the length of the ice. The Blues kill the penalty with Mahar and Sutter, Featherstone and Paul Cavallini. Hall in the box. Less than four minutes have been played. Here in the third, Tikkanen and Mahar rough it up. Klima into the blue zone. Klima on the right wing. Drops it to the slot and Mahar breaks up the play and shoots the puck back into the Edmonton end. Now Mahar replaced by Bassett. Here's Messier winding up in his own zone. The Hart Trophy winner through center ice. Over the line, centers and Lowry there to take the puck away and clear it away. Now Stevens and Brown come on for Featherstone and Paul Cavallini. Essa Tikkanen in his own end. Now to center ice. He'll slap the puck in. Riendo knocks it down behind the net for Jeff Brown. Ahead for Stevens to Bassett. Bassett up the far wing. Has the puck stripped away by Klima. He's bothered by Lowry. And the puck controlled by the Oilers. Tikkanen in his own zone. Right wing to Lindsman. A pass for Murphy intercepted. Then Klima has to circle at center ice. 43 seconds to go in Hull's penalty. Chris Joseph loses the puck. Lowry can't do anything with it. And here's Tikkanen. Now to Lindsman over the Blues line. To Murphy. Ridden to the boards by Stevens. Jeff Brown gets the puck. Clears it around the boards and down the ice. Rich Sutter races after it. Gets to it before Tikkanen. Avoids a check. Sutter comes back near the Edmonton blue line. Then reverses himself and shoots the puck behind the net. Where Reddick leaves it for Lindsman. Hall will be back in 13 seconds. Here's Lindsman leading the attack. He'll dump the puck in as the Blues defense stands up at the line. Murphy in the corner loses the puck to Brindamore. Hall about ready to come back on. Brindamore lugs it into the Edmonton zone. Stops. Across to Oates. Hall on. Takes a pass. Hall shoots. And he whistles it wide. Blues back at full strength. Brindamore right point. And that shot goes well wide. Here's Oates along the boards. In the slot to Paul Cavallini. And he scuffs one weakly to Reddit. In the corner, Brindamore. Ridden out of the play. Chris Joseph plays the puck to Huddy. Huddy up on the right wing to Murphy. 
14.05 to go. Blues intercept. Stevens in over the line. Good stick handling by Scott Stevens on his backhand. And a pass in front, but it's taken out. Hull tries to keep the puck in. He can't, but Stevens does. Off the boot of Oates to Stevens at the left point. He moves into the corner centers, and it goes through the goal mouth. Then Brown pinches in. Ahead to Oates. He centers. Loose puck. And it goes to Kurt, or Chris Joseph, and he shoots at the length of the ice. Back for it is Jeff Brown. He touches it, and it is an icing call against Edmonton. Three to two, the Blues lead it. This is St. Louis Blues hockey. Charlie, the Johnsons are having something delivered. Mm-hmm. It's a new air conditioner. That's nice, dear. What system's so great, they'd buy it this early? Must be a Lennox. Hmm. Air Expert's name says it all. When quality and comfort are a must, you need Air Experts. Must be a Lennox and Air Experts. Comfort Heating has been serving the Metro East area for over 25 years. Look for Mr. Comfort in the yellow pages. Now get cash back or 0% financing. It's good to see the Blues in a tighter game tonight. They lead 3-2 prior to this contest. Although they had won 7 of 8, in those 8 games, they had allowed 32 goals, an average of 4 per game. And Brian Sutter and the coaching staff concerned about the goals against. But much better tonight, especially in the first and third periods. It has been more to the Blues' liking. They lead it 3-2. Face-off won by the Oilers in their own zone. Smith eludes Mahar. Drops the puck for Messier up the middle. Mark Messier goes down, no penalty. He's able to scoop the puck in. Back forward is Jeff Brown, up the boards for Mahar. The pass goes too far, and Steve Smith retreats to get the puck in his own end. There's 13-12 to go, third period. Lose by a goal. A pass to Messier. He'll just wrist it in. The puck knocked down behind the net by Riendo, centered, and then cleared down the ice. A dangerous centering pass by Anderson. Bukaboom back to touch the puck. And it is icing against the Blues. Well, you talk about hockey, John, in this city, and you talk about Glenn Sather. The president and general manager was the coach of the team for four of the Stanley Cups. And he is very well known and well liked here. That's Ron Lowe to his right, the assistant coach, a former goalie. Sather, a very smart hockey man, and he's made a lot of money, they tell me, off the ice and away from the game. He owns a lot of property and the ski resort town of Banff, Alberta. So Sather has had a lot of good things going here at the Northlands Coliseum and in his business ventures as well. Face off, one by Lamb to low at the point, and his shot is tip wide. Dave Lowry deep in his own end for the Blues to Paul Cavallini to Rich Sutter, and there's Kevin Lowe pinching in, and he knocks Sutter down, and the puck is covered. When the Oilers have had success tonight, they have hemmed the Blues in, two men deep for checking, and the defensemen have pinched in, and that really closes the lanes for you. You'll see a lot of games where the Blues opposition just lets them roll out of their own end, and uh, that makes life very pleasant for your defensemen. But boy, when every time you look up, you've got an opposing sweater in your face. It is a very long night, and that's happened uh, many times tonight to the Blues. Here's Mark Lamb in the blue zone facing off against Bob Fasson. They tie each other up. The puck comes to Sutter. Lowry's the other way. He has trouble with a pass, but is able to shoot the puck in. Reddick out of the crease, leaves it for Kevin Lowe. He's on defense with Chris Joseph. The pass comes up on the wing. Luke Berger to Lamb. Then a return pass in the corner to Luke Berger. Now to Tegan into the near corner. He can't center. Paul Cavallini can't clear. Tegan in with a puck again to Lamb. He's spun around, tied up by Lowry. And the Blues clear to center ice. Hull gets the puck. He'll circle back at his own line. Then leaves it in the neutral zone for Paul Cavallini. Over to Brindamore into the Edmonton end. Brindamore with a puck. Tries to get it to Hull. Can't. And the Oilers' Lamb carries it to center ice. He'll flip the puck to the St. Louis defense. Stevens takes a pass from Paul Cavallini. Long Stevens shot in off the glass in the corner. Both teams completing a line change. Semenov knocked down in his own end by Momesso. Then Brown at the point with a puck gets it to Brindamore. Brindamore trying to move to the slot. Hampered by Messier. Left point to Stevens into the corner to Adam Oates. Oates is dumped by Muni. Gets back up. Then the puck cleared out to center ice. 
Anderson tied up by Oates. They battle for the puck in the neutral zone. It's kicked ahead to Messier. And Messier unable to get around Stevens. And the puck fired into the Edmonton end when Anderson circles with it. Into the corner, hits Huddy with it. Oates in front, a shot, and a great save by Reddick. Oh, almost a huge mistake by the Oilers. Here they come. Anderson for Edmonton over the line. Anderson into the slot and a wrist shot off Jeff Brown into the corner. Steve Smith for the Oilers to Messier, and that shot hits a leg. And Jeff Brown clears it not out. Bukaboom steps into one. And that shot goes well wide. And the puck ricochets all the way back to the Edmonton zone. Both teams changing players. Messier leaves the puck at center ice for Steve Smith. He moves around Tuttle, fires the puck in. Riendo leaves it behind the net for Featherstone. Right wing to Tuttle. At center ice, off of Courtnall's stick. He tries to get around. Bukaboom shoots, he scores! What a play by Jeff Courtnall! And the Blues get a huge fourth goal to lead it 4-2. to two. And Courtnall, slow in getting up, John. He took quite a tumble, but oh, what a great goal. That was a beautiful goal. He knocked the puck out of midair, a long pass from Tuttle, knocked it out of midair off the boards, and it went by Bukaboom, and he just used his great speed and slid it through Reddick's legs, who was caught halfway, but he just went right around Bukaboom, showing that great speed, and from a rather bad angle, he out muscles Bukaboom, and Reddick came out and had to go through his legs. And Courtnell scores his second in a row and his 22nd of the year. And the Blues take a 4-2 lead. Is that ever a big goal? But Courtnell showed great speed, great hand-eye coordination, and great ability in scoring that goal. Mahar and Tuttle assist. Courtnell number 22 is second of the night. He has a three-point night. Brett Hall also has a three-point night. And the Blues have a big two-goal lead. Now they have trouble getting the puck out of their own end. It's kept in by Lindsman. Into the corner, Paul Cavallini clears it off. Lowry not out, still kept in. Finally, Sutter gets it. Rich Sutter to center ice, drives it into the corner. Tegan in back for Edmonton. Tegan in from behind his own net. Gets it ahead to Klima. The other forward is Lindsman. Back to Tegan in. He gets around Featherstone and is yanked down. There'll be a tripping penalty called against Glenn Featherstone. And with 9.50 to go in the third period, the Oilers, down by two, will have the man advantage. This is St. Louis Blues Hockey. Tradition, the time-honored values of ride, room, and comfort, of V8 power and rear-wheel drive, and the granddaddy of them all, Mercury Grand Marquis. One full-size car that still delivers full-size value. And right now, to commemorate the end of an era, we're offering the last of these marvelous Grand Marquis with savings up to $1,650. This may well be your last chance to enjoy the familiar pleasures of the Grand Marquis, plus considerable savings. See your Lincoln Mercury dealer before time runs out. Featherstone, a tripping minor at 10-10. And the Oilers trailing 4-2 on their third power play. They have not scored a power play goal tonight. The Blues' last goal again. Courtnell is 22nd from Mahar and Tuttle at 9:31. Courtnell now with nine goals in his last nine games. He's on a Brett Hull-like pace. And the Blues get the puck, and it's cleared out by Stevens down the ice. A race for it, and Reddick comes out to clear the zone and get the puck ahead of Mahar. Then Lowry dumps it back in. The Blues are short a man. They lead it four to two. The turning point in this game, the last 37 seconds of the second period. Now Lowry steals from Anderson, moves it alone, he shoots, oh, and Reddick comes out to make the save on Lowry. A great save by Reddick on Dave Lowry. But no question, the turning point when the Blues scored at 19.59 of the second period, and now this is a very pivotal part of the third period. Lowry just stole the puck from Anderson, who earlier in the period gave the puck away to Adam Oates in the slot, so Anderson having a tough time in his own zone. And Reddick made a big save there. The Blues scored on that one. It could have been lights out as the Blues already lead 4-2. Boy, it's really hard to figure this game. The Blues played pretty well in the first period, bad in the second, and they've been super so far in this third period. And if they can hold off Edmonton here, Time will begin to be in their favor with a two-goal lead. 
Edmonton Murphy over the line on the right wing around Stevens. Passes it in front, and it's out of the reach of Semenov. Oilers try to keep it in and can, and Basson a good job to get the punt and clear it the length of the ice. A minute five to go in the Featherstone penalty. Under nine minutes to go in the third period. Deacon and races through center ice, moves in over the line, drops the puck, and it's taken away and cleared the length of the ice by Dave Lowry, who's killing the penalty now with Mahar, Stevens, and Paul Cavallini. Chris Joseph out of his own zone for Edmonton. Ahead to Seminoff over the line. He can't get around Stevens, who fights for the puck along with Murphy. It comes out to Joseph at the point. He has trouble. Gets it over to the right point. Deacon and a shot. Oh, and sliding down. To block and smother the puck is Scott Stevens. Great defensive play there by the Blues captain. You don't see that very often any longer. And Scott Stevens with a great block of a shot. And we now have 34 seconds left in the Oilers power play. They have not been able to set up the power play in the Blues end. Blues lead 4-2. As Ken mentioned, Cortnall two goals and one assist. Hall a goal and two assists. Oates has one assist, so he's continued his scoring streak. It has now reached 10 games, 28 points for Adam Oates over that span. Can the Blues win all three games this season from the defending Stanley Cup champion Oilers? We'll know soon. They win the draw. A Chris Joseph shot high over the net. Out at the right point, Tikkanen. 25 seconds to go in the power play. He sends the puck behind the net. Knocked high in the air. Brought back down. Anderson tries to kick the puck in front and can't. The Blues, Scott Stevens, clears it along the boards all the way back into the Edmonton zone. And both teams are changing players. Less than 10 seconds to go in the Oilers' power play. The attack led by Joseph. He moves the puck ahead to Anderson. He dumps it in off a of Blues player. Getting to it first and chopping it down the ice is Jeff Brown. Featherstone back on and he comes to the bench. Both teams are changing. Charlie Huddy with a puck in his own territory. His pass ahead intercepted by Oates to Paul Cavallini. Left wing to Brindamore. He'll flip it in and Charlie Huddy again back for the puck. Huddy wheels it around the right wing to Glenn Anderson. He can't clear it out. Dirk steps into a shot. And that deflects wide. After the puck, Charlie Huddy. He moves it ahead behind Klima and Paul Cavallini. Feeds to Oates. Now to Brindamore to Hall. He turns, shoots, and that goes just wide. Here come the Oilers. 7-10 remaining. Edmonton trailing the Blues 4-2. Huddy stopped by Hall, who shoots the puck in. Boy, a two-goal lead really changes the complexion. Time on the Blues' side. They can play good, strong defensive hockey. They take Tikkanen down. The puck cleared out by Cortnall. Shot right back in by Steve Smith. Not out. Here's a shot, and that drive by Tekin. It hits McCavish. He's slow in getting up, and the Blues move to center ice. Oates, a pass that eludes Paul Cavallini. He'll circle back into his own end as McCavish hobbles off. Here's Paul Cavallini to the red line. He'll just flip the puck in. The Blues now thinking defense. Quick, short changes. Here's Lindsman to center ice. Don't want anyone tired. Be out there 30 seconds, head to the bench. Oilers dump it in. Blues play the puck well in their own zone. Cortnall, a rink-wide pass to Tuttle. Tuttle carries into the Edmonton zone. Over to Featherstone. His shot blocked. A good play there by Kelly Bookberger. Puck behind the Oilers net. Tuttle buying for it with Steve Smith. Terry Fraser yells, play it. They kick it loose to Bukaboo. And he's tied up by Mahar. The Blues doing some sensational forechecking. And it comes loose. Played by Smith to Lima. A pass for Buchberger too far. And Riendo clears to the corner to Featherstone. 5.42 to go. Blues clear to center ice. And the Oilers fire the puck right back in. The Blues lead it 4-2 here in Edmonton. Lowe intercepts the puck. Can't make a play. Tuttle an outlet pass to Cortnall. Cortnall with two goals. Into the Edmonton end. He's checked. And it's cleared out by Chris Joseph. But intercepting is Stevens. And then he hits Klima with a buck, and it hops over the glass and out of play. 5.23 to go. Blues lead by two. This is St. Louis Blues Hockey. There's something wacky at McDonald's. A uh, Big Mac. The Tiny Toon Adventures Gang. Dad's Buster Bunny. And Fresh Egg. Fries. Cool, 
a Diet Coke, and uh, 100 Happy Meals. 100 Happy Meals. French lunch. I mean, one Happy Meal. <laughs> now buy your kid a hamburger Happy Meal at McDonald's for just $1.99 and get a Tiny Toon flip car. Collect all four, get all eight. 100 Happy Meals, sir. Now what? Better pop the trunk. McDonald's Happy Meal, just $1.99. Blues lead 4-2, 5-23 to play in the third period. And the Blues have played a picture-perfect period. They've outshot the Oilers 4-2, and they've scored the only goal. When you hold Edmonton to two shots on net through the first 14 and a half minutes, you are playing some very good hockey, but it's not over yet, Ken. The Oilers tonight with less than half as many shots as they had in their 7-5 win last night over Pittsburgh. They would rather be in last night's kind of game than this one. Both teams at full strength. Oilers move in. Anderson around Sutter. Anderson sends a puck in front and it goes off. Stevens behind the net. Paul Cavallini can't clear. Joseph at the right point a shot and that hits Seminoff. Left point to low. A pass to Anderson behind the net. The Oilers are dangerous here. Here's Glenn Anderson skating out near the blue line. Turns in the slot. A shot on a great pad save. Randall throwing out his right leg. Anderson keeps it in to low at the left point. His pass behind the net to Seminoff. He's got Messier in front. A pass that deflects back to the point. Joseph again a shot. This one blocked by Sutter. And the Blues wisely clear the puck the length of the ice to relieve the pressure. Low touches it. And that's an, ed an icing call against the Blues as the Oilers begin to come on a little bit. 4-2 Blues lead it. This is St. Louis Blues hockey. I check for a living, and I've been checking out the deals at your Midwest GMC dealers. These Sonomas are a real scorer with the most powerful fuel saver fuel injected engines in their class. With standard rear anti-lock brakes, wide sides, club coupes, 4x4s, they've got hundreds of them. Your Midwest GMC dealers, another reason why GMC trucks are number one. Check them out. Only at Bellman GMC in North County, Bomberito GMC in Ellisville, and Brockland GMC in Fairmont City, Illinois. Blues lead 4-2. After this game, they go on to Vancouver Thursday and Calgary Sunday. Oilers win the draw in the blue zone, then the puck slips away. Jeff Brown tries to clear camp. Huddy keeps it in on the near side. Behind the net again, Jeff Brown clearing it with the help of Hall down the ice. 4-12 to go. Third period. Blues 4 and the Oilers 2. Here's Muni for Edmonton. A pass in front of his net. Off the boards to Adam Graves. Graves to center ice. Bounces the puck in. Robert Dirk goes back for it. Crowd unhappy as Brindamore took Murphy out. Dirk gets it to center ice to Oates. Now to Hull. Hull has a goal. Over the line to Brindamore. Around the defense, but Huddy shoots. And a puck on the goal line. They keep it up. Now Dirk, his shot. And that goes off Graves wide. But Toki Reddick, the goaltender, is injured. And Kerry Fraser stops play. Holy cow, John. Brenda Moore did everything but put that in. He was shaking hands with Reddick in the goal crease while that puck was lying apparently right on the goal line. And he made a strong power move to the outside. Ran right over Reddick, who's only 5'7". And Reddick has been shaken up. And you're right, and that puck was right on the goal line. And it might have been partly across the line, but the red light never came on. Fraser immediately signaled, signaled no goal, and the, fly, the Oilers cleared it away, and Reddick is still down on his back. Laurent Brindamore is over 200 pounds, and he is solid muscle. The backup goalie tonight for Edmonton is Kare Taco, the former North Star. Bill Ranford, their number one man, is sidelined with a back injury. He played last night, but re-aggravated the injury. He couldn't even tie his shoes after the game he was so sore and Grant Fuhrer as you know is trying to make a comeback he played tonight in Cape Breton of the American League and beat Rochester 5-3 and Fuhrer should be back next week but right now the goaltending in the hands of Reddick who is down and Taco who could be up and ready if Reddick isn't well the Blues with a 4-2 lead. 3.41 to go. Pokey Reddick now sitting up. The Blues have the best road record in the NHL and are trying to win their 17th road game of the season. Again, Brennamore made the move. 
And the puck was on the goal line, but not across. The puck has to be completely across the line. If it's halfway across, it's no goal. But again, Brindamore went right around Huddy. Huddy had no chance. And Brindamore goes right into Reddick. And the puck hit Reddick and then stopped on the goal line. Sort of a bad break there for the Blues. I'll tell you, that was close to being all the way across the line as we get another look at it. Reddick really took a ride, didn't he? Brindamore looked like uh, he was trying not to fall on Reddick, but it looked like his knee went into Reddick's chest and he fell on the face mask of Reddick. And uh, Reddick finally up, but he came out the worst for wear in that collision. Four to two, the Blues lead it. This is St. Louis Blues hockey. Common misconceptions about the mountain man. Three, that a mountain man's best friend is his horse. Two, that a mountain man only packs a six gun. And one, that a mountain man only has one favorite, beer. Actually, mountain men are known to favor both smooth bush beer and easy drinking bush light. So, head for the mountains and find out how a real mountain man preserves wildlife. Blues lead 4-2. Let's pause here. 15 seconds for station identification. This is St. Louis Blues Hockey. Tomorrow night at 7, Eastwood has some tips on how to make a fistful of dollars. Watch the movie that made Clint a legend. Fistful of dollars. Tomorrow night at 7 on St. Louis 11. Down to the last three minutes, 35 seconds. Both teams at full strength. The Oilers work the puck to center ice. Messier ahead to Anderson. Back to Messier to Klima, and he's slowed up by Stevens. And the Blues clear to center ice. Here's Mahar to Brown. Now to Tuttle on the right wing. Tuttle over the line, flips the puck to the goal, and Reddick kicks it out. Huddy plays the puck up the right wing. Here's Charlie Huddy. Now to Messier. Back for Huddy. He didn't expect the pass. And a bouncing puck goes to Messier. He shoots and rings it off the goal post. Messier comes close to pulling the Oilers within one. And the Blues stopped at center ice. Klima to Anderson. He drops it for Messier, but Tuttle back checking intercepts. Rink wide pass to Kortnall. He eludes a check. And a feed for Sutter too far. And the Oilers, Lindsman can't clear it out. Sutter keeps it in to Basson. Bob Basson behind the Edmonton net. Almost loses the puck, then does. Teakin in off the boards for Kevin Lowe. 2.35 to go. 4-2 Blues. Lowe to center ice. Flips it in. Back to the puck is Dirk. He fails to clear, gets another chance. Then Dirk is checked. Here's Joe Murphy. Murphy centering for Tikkanen, and it's intercepted. Tikkanen was tripped. No call. Blues at center ice. Lowry. Sutter goes to the net. A pass for Sutter. That goes off the heel of his stick. And Lowe sweeps the puck to Joseph behind the Edmonton net. Down to 2.05 to go. Up to Joe Murphy. He'll flip it in. The Oilers are changing. Near his own net, Paul Cavallini takes the puck. Clears it around to Hall, but Smith moves in. Takes it away. Now to Tegan, and who centers off Dirk. Loose puck. Anderson pokes it back to Joseph at the point. His shot high off the glass. Here's Essa Tegan in for Edmonton. Into the slot to Anderson. He's too well covered. Tegan unable to center from the corner a second time. The puck comes to Brett Hall. He has a goal tonight. Hall with his 59th, and the Blues just shoot it in. Down to a minute 30 to go. It's four to two Blues. Looking for their 17th road win. That's how many they won on the road last season. They have never won more than 17 road games in a season. The Oilers shoot the puck in, but it goes over the glass into the crowd. And we'll have a face off at the center checkered red line with 120 remaining in the third period. Well, Blues fans, when you've got a major thirst, don't just reach for a beer. Head for the mountains and the refreshingly smooth taste of Bush beer. Blues lead 4-2. I mentioned their road trip continues after this game. Thursday in Vancouver, Sunday in Calgary. The Blues' next home game is a week from tonight against Toronto on Kodak photo card night. The first 15,000 fans will partake in that fine giveaway. Then on Thursday, the 21st, the Islanders on, in town on Popolo's, Geno's, and Schnook's Blues Youth Jersey Night, and then Boston in town on Saturday the 23rd. Now play resumes. Oilers move in. Here's Messier in the corner. In front for Kevin Lowe, and the puck hops off his stick to center ice. And Mahard, he'll shoot it in. 
Blues a minute and five away from a victory in Edmonton, which would make it two this season, and a sweep of the three-game series with the defending Stanley Cup champions. Blues do some good forechecking. Now the puck tied up in the corner in the Edmonton end with Bassett on top of it, with only 53 seconds to go in regulation play. Well, you can read all about tonight's game and tomorrow's St. Louis Post-Dispatch, where you'll find coverage all season long of all the hot ice action. For home delivery of the Post, call 622-7111. Let's pause five seconds for station ID. This is St. Louis Blues Hockey. You're watching Blues Hockey on KPLR-TV, St. Louis 11. Ken Wilson, John Kelly in Edmonton. Oilers win the faceoff in their own end. Boy, I've really been impressed tonight with the Blues. A fine first period. The Oilers really played well in the second period, much better than the Blues. But this third period, showing by the Blues, has been spectacular. The puck dumped into the Blues zone, and Scott Stevens clears it out with half a minute to go. Edmonton has been held to a meager three shots on goal in this period. Oates steals the puck, flips it in. This Edmonton team over the last 40 games or so has been one of the best in the league. So it's really saying something to come here and get a win. Back the other way, Tikkanen over the line and his shot off Jeff Brown over the glass and into the crowd. And most of this crowd has already departed. And by the way, a crowd of uh, less than capacity. They had empty seats here last night and some empty seats here again at the Northlands Coliseum this evening. This broadcast has been authorized by the St. Louis Blues Hockey Club solely for the entertainment of our viewing and listening audience. Any publication, rebroadcast, or other use of the description and accounts of this game without the express written consent of the St. Louis Blues Hockey Club is prohibited. Now, 15 seconds left, and I'm surprised the Oilers are leaving the goalie in, Ken. I don't know why they would. They have nothing to lose. I'm a little surprised, too. The face-off, the puck comes to center ice, 10 seconds to go. The Blues seconds away from moving into first place in the Norris Division. Oilers shoot the puck in. Blues control it. Three seconds remaining. Here's Sutter out to his own blue line, and the siren sounds, and this one is over. Oh, what a fabulous third period played by the Blues. The Blues hold the Oilers to three shots in the period and end up with a 4-2 victory. Their 17th road win. The Blues now with 12 victories, only three losses and a tie in the last 16. They've won three in a row, eight out of nine. And, John, I guess more importantly, they've moved ahead of the Blackhawks finally into first place in the Norris Division. And I'll be honest with you, as well as Edmonton has been playing lately, I thought this would be a tough game for the Blues. And uh, if we haven't been convinced yet, you have to be convinced tonight. I think this has been a great, great showing by the Blues here in Edmonton tonight. Well, especially that third period. You can bottle that one and save it for a long time. Our Bush three stars tonight. The third star, Rod Brindamore, had a big goal and played very well. Number two, Brett Hall had a goal and two assists. His 59th of the year, he scored a goal in eight straight games. And tonight's Bush first star, Jeff Courtnell, who is red hot. He had two goals tonight, one assist. And Courtnell now with nine goals in his last nine games. So a lot of hot players and a hot team, which is now in first place. Well, what a test for the Blues. They win the first of three out here in Western Canada. Now Thursday night in Vancouver, another test Sunday at Calgary, and then home next Tuesday against Toronto. The final here in Edmonton tonight. The St. Louis Blues four, the Edmonton Oilers two. We'll return to the Northlands Coliseum in just a moment. This is St. Louis Blues Hockey. This is the Discover Card, and this is $100 million. That's the cashback bonus earned by card members. But if you don't use this, you don't get any of this. It pays to Discover. Most credit cards total your charges and send you a bill. But once a year, the Discover card totals your charges and sends you something in return. It pays to Discover. You can do it with true value. Some people are very particular about their workshops. That's why they fill them with master mechanic tools, like the master mechanic 14-piece screwdriver set for just $14.99. This revolutionary fiber steel ratchet is part of their 27-piece standard and metric socket set for only $29.99. And this roomy master mechanic plastic toolbox is just $12.99 at participating True Value hardware stores and home centers. 
Are you feeling low? What's the problem? Have you lost your rhythm? Wait a minute. Oh, man. Then start marching to the movie that will put you back in step. That is a novelty. I must see that. Cadence. Yeah, that's what I'm talking about. With Charlie Sheen, Martin Sheen, and Larry Fishburne. Rated PG-13. Starts Friday at a theater near you. We invited folks over to try our delicious fried chicken, compliments of Hardee's. And it's chicken's kind of juicy and it's crispy. Good juicy. Juicy. It's nice and crispy. How does it compare to Kentucky Fried Chicken original recipe? I think it's much better than Kentucky. I say I think it's better chicken than Kentucky. I don't like Kentucky. Hardy's Fried Chicken. Taste preferred over Kentucky Fried Chicken, 63 to 37. Yeah. And now get eight pieces of great tasting Hardy's Fried Chicken for just $5.99. The Blues now have won eight of their last nine. They win it here tonight in Edmonton, four to two over the Oilers. Ken Wilson along with John Kelly welcoming you back. Certainly, Courtnall had a great night. Hull had a great night. Courtnall, a third-period goal that uh, extended the lead to two, let the Blues play really their style of hockey. John, I still think the turning point of this game was late in that second period when the uh, Oilers were playing great. They had a fabulous period. It looks like they, at that point, looked like they were going to take the game away. And the Blues had that two-man advantage, got that crucial disputed goal as the second period ended. And in my mind, that really was the most important point of the game. Well, there's no question that was. If that goal's not countered, the Blues go into the period 2-2, and it's a different kind of hockey game as it is. They get the goal from Courtnell. They get another goal from Courtnell midway through the third, a great goal, a great individual effort, and they just shut down Edmonton in that third period. So the two keys, obviously, the Courtnell goal late in the second and just great defensive hockey in that third period, limiting the Oilers to three shots. And what does it all mean? Well, if nothing else, in the Norris Division standings, finally the Blues have moved ahead of Chicago, and John, the Blues still have a game in hand. And that game in hand will not come for another week or so because both the Blues and Blackhawks play this Thursday and Sunday. The Hawks host Quebec on Thursday. The Blues travel to Vancouver, but they have finally overtaken those Hawks a one-point lead, and they still have one game in hand. A very, very big victory for the Blues tonight here in Edmonton. For John Kelly, this is Ken Wilson. Thanks for joining us at the Northlands Coliseum. And once again, the final score... The St. Louis Blues 4, the Edmonton Oilers 2. St. Louis Blues hockey has been a presentation of Bud Sports through the facilities of KPLR-TV and KMOX Radio. Our next telecast here on KPLR-TV, St. Louis 11, coming up from the arena Saturday night, February the 23rd as the Blues will take on the Boston Bruins. That telecast will start at 7.30 Central Time. St. Louis Blues hockey has been brought to you by Bush Beer. Head for the mountains of Bush by Southwest Airlines, providing frequent flights and low unrestricted fares to many exciting destinations. By your Midwest GMC truck dealers, Bellman, Amarito, and Brocklin GMC. By your local McDonald's restaurants, stop by for great food, folks, and fun. By Shop and Save, the more you shop, the more you save. By Allstate, for home, auto, life, and business, you're in good hands with Allstate. By AutoZone, the best part in auto parts. And by Hardy, all kinds of good stuff. For business or pleasure, on weekdays or weekends, at the Adams Mark Hotel, there's a night with your name on it. Come, share the excitement, and stay with us in the heart of downtown St. Louis at the Adams Mark, the Hotel of St. Louis.